clicked record early because the lights behind my desk are new and I was just gonna show them off. Isn't it pretty? Gives me a cool background. Okay, fast forward. Lecture will start in a second. I know, but it's so pretty. I can't help it. Oh, 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 check out the front. Check out the front. Have y'all seen the front? What? That is a beautiful classroom. I know. Anybody, anybody want to be in the video? I could turn this around. Yeah, it's another new lecture. Huh? Here, we'll do, we'll do a quick spin. Whoa! Did it work? All right. No, it's not an outfit. They're just clothes. Boys don't wear outfits. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was going to be. Who else was gone yesterday? I don't own any hoodies. Yes, you do. That's some BS. You don't like chemistry. You can't say BS to a teacher. That's some baloney sandwich. You right can't there. talk about lunch meat. Okay. Um. If you uh, look on your sheet, I want you to find the slide that says calorimetry. It's also the one that's got this blue equation here. That'll be the equation we use. The, um, that new blue equation, um, it's the equation for calorimetry, and it's pronounced Q equals MCAT. If you're cool, do you see the MCAT? Oh, uh, well, yeah, that's a different MCAT. But. Anyway, um, for math, <laughs> it's to be a vet, right? Um, if you look at the variables, I want to talk about one of them in particular before we begin today. Oh, by the way, uh, I do have some good news for you. You know how yesterday I went till about two minutes before the bell? That's not going to happen today. We gotta, it's a last lecture, and it, it goes kind of quick, actually, so hooray. Um, okay, the C stands for specific heat. This is a way that we calculate calories. Um, now, I know you recognize that word from food science, right? But by definition, <laughs> that time someone choked to death on one of my videos. Um, <laughs> the uh, C stands for specific heat, and I want y'all to understand what this means. Now, you don't have to write down this definition because it's on your slide. So just focus in. I just want your brain to absorb what this is. <clears throat> the specific heat of a substance describes how much energy has to be put into that substance to make its temperature raise one degree Celsius. Listen again. The specific heat of a substance is how much energy you have to put into that substance to make its temperature raise one degree Celsius. Now, these are constant values per substance, meaning right now you could go and retrieve a, a, a book, all right, a journal that has every element, every compound, its specific heat. It's a, new, it's a number for each one. <clears throat> Having said that, I want you to think about something with me. I want you to think about metal, just metal in general. Do you think, without speaking, do you think that metals have high values for specific heat or low values for specific heat? You're just thinking right now. Remember, the specific heat, the amount of energy that you have to pump in to make the temperature change. High or low? What do you think? 
They get hot what? They get hot. They, they, they do. So do you think that you have to put in a lot of energy to change the temperature or just a little bit? Where do you use metal very commonly in the kitchen? I don't know. The stuff. <laughs> <laughs> to feed the cat. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I just, I like Natalie's responses today. <laughs> No, I, I'm just, I'm glad we're interacting. That's what I care about. No, you use them to cook, all right? The reason you use metal to cook is because if you put them on the stove, they get hot fast. The reason they do that is because their specific heat is really low. You don't have to, I know, praise, praise Landry. You don't have to put very much energy into them to make their temperature change, meaning their specific heat is low. Now, let me give you an example of a substance that has a high specific heat. Did you just say it? Oh, sorry, I thought you mouthed it. Wait, wait, what did you say? Dang it. Water. <laughs> Water has a high specific heat compared to other substances on Earth because it's hard to heat water. You've got to pump a bunch of energy for a long time, for quite a while anyway, comparatively, to make water's temperature change. Now, to give you kind of a frame of reference, water's specific heat is 4.18. You can write that number down. That's not a bad one to have. <clears throat> water's specific heat is 4.18. And what I'm telling you is that that's a high specific heat. So now you kind of have a range. Aluminum's specific heat, anybody want to take a stab? What do you think? It's metal, low. All right, yeah, it's below one. All right, it's a decimal number because aluminum heats fast. Water heats slow. Okay. So with specific heat in mind, what we can do is connect this new variable C to yesterday's ideas of enthalpy, right, the change in energy in a system, and we can analyze a, a scenario on, on what the heat's doing based on how heavy the items are, that's the M is mass, and how much the temperature is going to change, that's the delta T. So you can see up on the board here, and this is on your slides, look at that calorimetry slide, what the Q equals M cat stands for, all right, um, as we're going through some examples. So, um, if you look here, all right, this is where we're at, and uh, you look at this uh, slide that's got two problems on it. Um, both of these first two problems are more plug and chug. They're very simple. It's the third problem that will make you scratch your brain for an extra second. But um, let's uh, let, let's get let's get our juices flowing with some some easier math. So uh, take a look at that first one. Here's what it says. How much, how much heat must be added to change the temperature of 250 grams of water from 25 to 60 degrees Celsius? So let's take that, uh, that info and just start uh, plugging numbers in. All right. Have the equation Q equals MCAT in front of you. Remember, the Q is going it, to, it's energy, so it's going to be measured in some form of joules like yesterday. All right, delta H was in kilojoules, and this equation uses joules, so that, so it's interesting there. Um, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Let's plug. Um, it says how much heat. It wants to know Q, all right, because the Q is going to be the total amount of energy there is. So if it wants to know how much heat, then that's what we're going to be solving for. All right. And then it says 250 grams of water. There's our mass. All right. So Q equals MCAT. Keep that in mind Why I'm putting the numbers where I'm putting them. What should the value of C be? 4.18. Because this problem looks at water. And specific heat is constant for whatever you're talking about. So it's going to be 4.18. All 
and then careful on the delta t. All right, we talked about delta yesterday. It means it's the, it means change, right? But look here, because this is a, a life lesson in case you didn't get this in middle school for some reason. If you're given two items and you want to know what the, the change is in those two values, does anyone know specifically how you find it? What do you do? Difference, but that's not specific enough. That's, that's difference, more specific. There's two values. You want to know the difference between them. Which one minus which one? No, no, no. Not the bigger one minus the smaller one. Because you can have negative answers when you're doing changes. Nobody knows? Yes, that's right. It's final minus initial, all right? If you have your two values, it's the final one minus the initial one. So keep that in mind. So watch here. Um, it says that we're going from 25 to 60. So I'm going to go 60 minus 25. And that's real important. I did. That's real important, y'all. Yeah, Raj, y'all, I don't know what that means. Okay. You can uh, you can plug this in. There's not even any algebra here. Just plug and chug. Let's make sure that our, uh, our our button pressing skills are on. Watch your sig figs. Now, the um, specific heat will never dictate sig figs, and temperatures will always have at least two sig figs. So keep that in mind no matter how stuff is printed. So I'm going to give a two sig fig answer here of calculator. Oh, yeah, 37,000. I get 37,000 joules. How many kilojoules is that? Now, I know when I ask those questions, some of y'all's brains still shut down because you hate that question. All right, but I don't know how to say it easier. It's not difficult, right? If, if I ask you, uh, if you're really tired, and I said, hey, do you want to walk a meter or do you want, want to walk a kilometer? Which one should you choose? Meter, right? Because a meter is very short and a kilometer is quite long. All right. So we know that kilo is bigger than that base of just meter or you should by now. And remember what I said. If the unit gets bigger, the number gets smaller. Then I have to know that kilo means a thousand times bigger, which has three zeros in it. And that's the number of decimal slides. So if we make the, the uh, number smaller by three, it's 37 kilojoules. Now, the reason that I bring that up is because kilojoules, and I'm, I'm sorry, today's Q units of joules is different than what enthalpy is usually measured in, which is kilojoules. Um, and there's times where you might want them to talk to each other. So I'm just reminding you. Let's do another one. No, 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 no. I mean, there's no moles in this, but no. Yes. <laughs> you threaten me too. Um, no, thanks. All right, look at the next problem. Um, again, pretty simple, just a, a couple little twists on there. It says if 2.09 joules are required to change the temperature of 15 grams of mercury. Now, let's talk about mercury real quick. All right, it's not water, so now we're going to expect the specific heat to not be 4.18. Now, what do you know about mercury, though? Does mercury react quickly to temperature changes, or does it react slowly? Super quickly, because where do we use mercury? In thermometers. So you want thermometers to quickly know when there is a change in temperature. So what do we expect the specific heat of mercury to be, high or low? All right. And this problem is going to have us calculate it. So now we're expecting a small number. But let's look at our data. 
It says 2.09 joules. I know that it is the Q, the total uh, heat energy that's going to be measured in joules. All right. Equals, all right, Q equals M cat, so I need mass. It looks like the mass of my sample here is given at 15 grams. It does. It does have to be grams. Yeah, none of my questions in this class are going to mess with that. But yeah, milligrams, kilograms would be no good. Yeah. And the reason is because specific heat, the units that we haven't talked about are given in grams, so they have to match. I thought you asked me if we had to start with moles. Oh, well, but then you said moles, and I thought you were looking for moles. Yes, yes, it is. Um, we don't know C because it says what is the specific heat, but then look at the temperature. This problem doesn't give you a range. What does it give you instead? It tells you the change. It did the subtraction for you. It says that the, the temperature is going to change, delta T, by Now, you'll notice that I'm not altering Celsius to Kelvin, all right? Maybe there's someone out there that that's bothering because you're like, aren't we always supposed to use Kelvin? <clears throat> you don't have to in calorimetry because the absolute difference of the values will stay the same. If you add 273, all right, and then subtract the difference between the set range they give you, the difference stays the same. So degree Celsius is okay for calorimetry. Now, um, our math here looks pretty simple. Um, it looks like it's going to be 2.09 equals 15 C. So let's finish solving. I'm sorry? There's three sig figs in this problem. Yeah, but like, the last couple of years, the pressure is the other. How does mercury's specific heat compare to water's? It's dramatically lower, right? As expected, because mercury changes temperatures very quickly. Everybody okay with my algebra there? Want to do a harder one? Oh, it's going to be our last math problem together, this next one. Don't thank me in front of everybody, though. Look at the next slide. There is a couple, uh, the, the math is a little different on where the variable is, but then there is a sneaky, sneaky trick. Let's check it out. So I can show it here. Do, 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 do. It says, calculate the final temperature, so that so there's already the, the variable thing, is that the item that's missing is going to be a, a part of delta T. So that's fun. After 1575 joules of heat are removed from 85 grams of ethyl alcohol, so it's not water. That'll make specific heat something that's not 4.18. And then it gives us an initial temperature followed by a specific heat. So let's check it out. We've got uh, 1575 joules. I know that the Q is measured in joules. It's going to be my heat energy present. Q equals M cap. The mass given of the sample here 
is 85 grams. The specific heat is also given at 2.4. Keep in mind that the specific heat will not dictate sig figs because it's a constant value. And now careful with the next part, all right? Are we missing the initial or are we missing the final? We're missing the final. Which one comes first in my subtraction expression? Yeah, the final comes first. All right, minus, what was the initial? 23. Final minus the initial, and final is what we're solving for. Now, don't start running math, though, because there's a problem. All right, so the algebra is going to look a little different because of there's, there's that living there, but you can handle it. There's an enthalpy issue. If you think back to yesterday, this question is purposely trying to trick you because of the extra wording that's in there. Somebody find it. Go back to the question. Say it again. The word removed is a big indicator. Look here. Remember, in thermochem, pluses and minuses don't mean positives and negatives. Pluses and minuses, when describing the heat, only looks at where it's going. All right? That 1575 is the amount of energy that we have. All right? Cool. But the problem says that that energy is leaving the system. What's the, what's the vocab word for exothermic? And what is the joule sign for an exothermic reaction? It's negative. If you miss that negative symbol, the answer you get is quite different at the end. So not all the problems do this, obviously, but you got to watch for it trying to be sneaky. All right, um, run the algebra on your own. I'll run it up here, and hopefully um, you don't have any issues.
We're good at math. All right. Go to the last slide of your deal. We're going to end with something very simple, but it is the rationalization of thermo situations. But we got to make sure you understand. Look here for a moment before we look at these two problems. Imagine that I had a big container of really hot water and a small container of really cold water, and I poured them into common containers. Would you expect the resulting solution to be hot or cold? hot because there was a lot more hot than there was cold that's kind of the foundation of this last idea look at these questions there's two of them squint and read it says a 100 gram sample of water at 90 degrees celsius is added to a 100 gram sample of water at 10 degrees celsius let's think about those numbers for a moment same amounts or different amounts of water same amounts, they're both 100 grams, but different temperatures. Can anybody guess what will happen? There's a, a mathematical vocab word that I'm looking for. What happens if you mix the same volumes, but at different temperatures together? Say it again, it'll average together, all right? So that's not a bad thing to write down, all right? Same amounts, different temperatures, the result's an average. Same amounts, different temperatures. The result is an average. So what's the answer of the multiple choice there? Yeah, B, 100 plus 90, I'm sorry, 10 plus 90 is 100 divided by 2 is 50. Look at the other one. A 100 gram sample of water at 90 Celsius is added to a 500 gram sample of water at 10 degrees Celsius. Different volumes or Yes, but different amounts at different temperatures. Who's going to win here, hot or cold? The cold, because there's a lot more of it. So the answer is C. Goodbye forever.